So if you're having this problem where every time you turn on your PlayStation 3 that you have to keep entering the date and time, well, that pretty much means that you're going to need to replace the BIOS battery. In this video, I'll show you how to do that. And also I'll show you how to refresh the thermal paste. Even if you have the same looking PlayStation 3, you may find there are some variants along the way. So you'll just need to adapt. So not only will I tell you how to do these things in the video, I will also be showing you how not to do it. I made a few errors along the way, so hopefully you can avoid doing those and make your journey a lot more easier. Well, let's get to it. So let's turn this over. Want to remove the screw covers. There are seven. One of mine are missing, but uh, remove the seven covers and use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the screws. This one here is a, a permanent one, just to trick you, so look out for that. If you haven't removed the covers before, you may find they're a little bit sticky, so just persevere with them. And it's worth pointing out now that you are now avoiding your warranty. This thing here is what is holding in your hard drive. If you're planning on replacing the thermal paste, you will need to remove this. If you're just aiming to remove the battery, then you don't need to do this part. Next up is to remove the torque screws beneath the Blu-ray drive. Mine has three, but you might find that you have four. Use a T8 uh, security Torx uh, screwdriver. Uh, I didn't have one to hand. I used a miniature uh, jeweler's flathead screwdriver. It did the trick, but it does take much longer. So if you can, use the T8 Torx screwdriver. And now we just need to remove the cover. It seems to be stuck. Oh yes, I've left a screw in. Make sure you remove all the screws. And you can see it now comes easily off once you've removed all the screws. The PlayStation collects a lot of dust, so yeah. If you want to, you can clean the dust off as you go along. I'll just be giving it a gentle brush all the way through. In my previous video, I showed you how to remove the fan and clean that. Again, the link is in the description below. So now we need to remove the power connector. Whilst we're here on this side, we'll remove one of the two screws holding the PSU in place. And on the other side, if you pull out the DC out cable straight up to lift the connector up 
and out of its socket on the power supply and remove that screw as well. Now to remove the power supply just lift it up from the left side and it will come out nicely. You can see it collects loads of dust and you can see the two metal pins that go directly into the power supply. Now we'll move around the PS3 so we can remove the Blu-ray ribbon cable. If you use the flat end of a sponger or even your finger now to flip up the retaining flap on the Blu-ray ribbon cable socket, make sure you are prying up the movable retaining flap and not the actual socket itself. And pull the Blu-ray ribbon cable straight up and out of its socket. And on the other side, pull the Blu-ray power cable straight up to lift its connector out of the socket on the Blu-ray drive. I find a wiggle side to side does the job rather than just pulling it straight up. Now remove the single Phillips screw securing the Blu-ray drive to the lower case. Remove the Blu-ray drive and there you can see is the BIOS battery. I think if you're going to replace the BIOS battery it's best to use a, a quality battery. I know you can get cheap uh, CR2032s. If you're going to do something like this you may as well get a high quality battery. At least you know it's going to last another good five to ten years so whilst holding the plastic retainer down against the board use the tip of a sponger to pry the uh, battery out of its housing if you don't hold the plastic retainer down during the prying process you may result in actually tearing it off the motherboard you don't want to do that So we'll just pop the new one back in and that is essentially it. So let's go and renew the thermal paste on the CPUs. So we'll remove these screws here. These are quite fiddly to get to. If you've got a magnetic screwdriver, you'll find uh, it'll save you a lot of hassle because no doubt you will drop the screw into one of the little tool nooks and crannies, which is very annoying. Just like what I've done here. Now we'll try and remove the chassis and board from the plastic bottom. It's not coming out. Ah, make sure you take this ribbon cable out. 
This is the ribbon cable for the front uh, uh, panel assembly. It's still not coming out. Why is this? All the screws are removed. Nothing obvious seems to be holding it in. Oh look. So if you remember from the beginning of the video, you need to remove the screw that holds the hard drive in place. little plastic panel at the front has now come off as you can see up on the right. We can slide out the hard drive and now we can remove the actual uh, chassis and the main board. It's not completely free, there are still two wires connected to the uh, main chassis. So we're just going to unscrew those, one screw each. I'm not sure what they actually do to be honest. And now it's completely free. As you can see the bottom Full of dust so you can give that a clean. I'll just give it a quick dust at a later point. And now we've got the metal cover which is protecting the main circuit board. Now we want to remove the screws holding that metal cover. So we need to remove these plates. These appear to be part of the heat sink function. Let's remove the screws. There's one. Number two. here on the edge. This one is particularly tough and this is one of the little issues I had. So unfortunately after a few attempts I've actually ruined the screw head and I can't get a grip. And unfortunately I've had to resort to using a drill to remove the screw head. And hopefully this will allow me to remove that metal plate. This is not ideal but I've come this far. I might as well continue. Now I've removed that screw head, I just need to remove this metal cover and off it comes. Yay! Next up we need to remove the main circuit board. So if you use your thumbs to give it a push from this edge here, you can feel it moving slightly. You won't be able to see it as such and if you pull up at the other end what will happen is the circuit board will pop up. Be careful as you remove it as there are some wires that run through into the chassis.
there are two wires connected to the main board. You can actually remove this, but uh, I got to the point where I had enough. I decided to keep them on and just balance the chassis up. In hindsight, this probably wasn't the best thing to do. And there you can see the CPUs. Over the course of 12 years, um, the thermal paste, well, it deteriorates. So what we'll do, we'll remove the old paste. What I'm using is some cleaning alcohol and uh, a cotton bud. And uh, yeah, just gradually removing it. It can be tedious, but uh, if you allow yourself 10 minutes to remove it, and don't forget to uh, clean the heat sink on the top of the chassis part as well. And now we'll add in some fresh thermal paste. I find just a dollop in the middle will suffice. You don't need to go too mad or add too much because it will come spurging out on the sides once you uh, put the chassis back on. You don't want that. Now we can lower the chassis back into place, put that main board back into the chassis. Be careful as you do it, there's no rush. Make sure everything is aligned properly. Make sure those two connectors don't come loose. Uh, you may find if you don't keep an eye on those two, when you reassemble, if they're not connected, you will come across some errors when you boot up. And just feed the cables back through. It can be quite fiddly to do this. Don't rush it, take your time. Now we can replace the metal cover. The clamps back in, the heatsink clamps back in. And put the screws back. Then we can lower that all back into the bottom case. Put these thingy jigs back in to their slots and put the screws in. Make sure they're lined up correctly, they're only going one way. And also make sure you feed the wire around back again properly as well. And place them back under the tape. Probably best or easier if you put the hard drive back in once the lower chassis is in the case. Not this way. Don't put the hard drive back in this way.
now we can put the screws back in so that chassis is attached to the bottom cover yay and that was me just uh, successfully selling something on ebay feed the wire back around and we can put that front the black front panel back into its uh, place i didn't quite capture it properly on the camera And we can put the Blu-ray drive back into its place. Make sure you get it lined up properly. And put that screw back in. Uh, reconnect the wires. And carefully place the ribbon cable back in place and make sure it's slotted down using your thing or your thumb now will do the job nicely And now we can put the power supply back in place. And if you angle it over to the right, then lower on the left. Remember those two metal prongs. They need to slide in properly into the power supply. If it doesn't feel or look right, just take it out and try it again. And put the screws back in. Put the connectors back on. Just check the alignment, make sure it's all fitting correctly. And finally, we can replace the top cover. And that's it. We put the screws back in and fire up the machine and uh, hopefully it should all work nicely for you. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching and if you found this video useful please hit the like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you on the next one.